Prime Minister Philip J. Pierre counts the implementation of the minimum wage as a promise kept. Opposition leader Alan Chastney thinks it is not enough. Can an individual buy a car, build a home, go on vacation, feed themselves, have insurance, and do all those things on $1,000 a month? Some people remain divided on whether a minimum wage is good for business and whether the wage announced is really a livable wage. CSA President Tekla Goodman is not in two minds about it. We welcome any initiative that benefits our members. The pension increase, our pensioners are happy with it. The minimum wage, quite a few of our members are benefiting from the minimum wage because we have quite a few members who fell below um, the amount proposed and would be happy come October to have extra money in their pocket. So it was a really good initiative by the government, and I'm happy that the government is listening. There is no doubt that low-wage earners will get a boost from higher wages. However, it is reasonable to assume that businesses, especially small businesses, will feel the squeeze and pass the increased costs on to consumers. Worse yet, with the rise of artificial intelligence, even highly educated professionals could soon find themselves becoming redundant as AI is better suited to doing accounting, report writing, and desk jobs than it is at doing plumbing, building, or cleaning toilets. While I understand that, um, my concern is my members. And my members are happy, I am happy. We are extremely happy for minimum wage, which benefits a lot of workers also in St. Lucia. While many underpaid workers will be happy to see their pay packets fatten, there are still concerns that rising inflation does not make this minimum livable wage livable. This is a starting point. We can only grow and build from there. That's how I see it. For Choice News Now, I'm Jason Seafley.